Neuralink's recent showcase of their brain chip has made this new age of technology seem that much more real. In the oddly low quality livestream, a man who is paralyzed from the neck down is able to control a computer caster purely with his mind. Musk likens it to telepathy, but is it really the superpower he says it is? Or is it a marketing term to hide the true implications of what this technology could mean? If you've seen Black Mirror or even really thought about brain chips, you'll know there's some dark possibilities associated with the idea. But as we've seen recently, Neuralink and other brain chip companies have been quick to focus on the medical potential. It's obviously true that there's some amazing things this can do. Neuralink's latest livestream is proof of that. You can see the effect this technology is having in restoring the faculties and freedom that we take for granted, but that some people have lost. Playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouth stick and stuff, but now it's all... Uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Actually, can you pause the song just for the yeah, audio absolutely. coming through? But how does this even work? It sounds like something straight out of 1984. And medical things aside, how does a brain chip in your brain allow you to restore your mental faculties? Well, right now, these chips, which are around the size of a quarter, can only read information and transmit it to an outside source. After being surgically attached to the brain, the chip sensors detect neuron activity and translate it into a digital signal. This can then be sent to external devices, which is what's been happening in the live stream. We see Nolan, the man in the video, playing chess by using the experimental chip. As he imagines where the cursor should go next, it responds to his thoughts and moves across the screen. It's excellent progress considering the first human trials only started at the turn of the year, just a few months before the live stream. You can imagine the possibilities beyond this though, like controlling other devices like wheelchairs or anything else really, to walking again with prosthetics or even repairing the connection to people's own limbs. In fact, this is something we've already started to see from Swiss researchers that Musk has funded. In the middle of May of 2023, a neural chip implanted into a paralyzed man enabled him to walk again for the first time. One chip in his brain records the signal sent by motor neurons in his brain. This then links to a similar chip in his spine, which sends electrical signals to the nerves in his legs. Over a long period of training, Oscam, who was paralyzed for over a decade, can suddenly walk again. The results are absolutely miraculous and incredibly promising for the future. For more than a decade, Gert Jan Oskam has been trying to relearn to walk. A motorbike accident in his late 20s left him paralyzed from the hips down, changing his life forever. But now, Oscom is back on his feet, thanks to groundbreaking digital implants in his brain and his spine. After two days, within five to ten minutes, I could control my uh, hips. Although obviously it's still highly experimental and there's a few caveats. Can't be used constantly only for a few hours a week, but it's still worlds away from nothing at all. And in this sense, Neuralink is amazing. Technology like this in the right hands and treated with great care can change the lives of millions of people for the better. But this is just a tiny part of Neuralink. You see, even Elon Musk has admitted that this isn't the primary purpose of Neuralink. Even in a benign scenario, we're kind of left behind. You know, we're, 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 not, we're not along for the ride. Um, we're just too dumb. Right. So, so, so how do you go along for the ride? Yeah, it's like you can't beat him, join him. The real purpose, the true core fundamental reason, is for humanity's battle against AI. But of course, this isn't a very marketable idea. Telling people that they need to be plugged in to Elon Musk's brain chip to fight off AI just seems so ridiculous. And so right now, Neuralink and similar companies are focusing solely on medical research because this will be the only acceptable way they can make this technology mainstream in the first place. Because as the technology gets better, it will see far more use to treat patients with nerve damage and other medical issues. But at some point, it'll pass the barrier from being a medical tool into a genuine consumer product, just like an iPhone. And you can be absolutely sure that that's what Elon Musk and others like him have in mind. They openly admit it. And we're, we're, already, we're already a cyborg to some degree, right? Because you've got your phone, you've got your laptop. Glasses. Your, yeah, yeah, you could you know, sure. electronic devices. Yeah. You might expect it to not offer much to able-bodied individuals. Our hands and our senses are easily able to do all the things that we can imagine that these neural chips will help with. Right now, there seemingly isn't much point or any need to beam a news article or a TikTok video straight into your brain, especially if reading it is far easier and far more natural, let alone way less dystopian. 
In the same way, it seems like a hassle to get chipped and play computer chess with your mind when a mouse and keyboard can do the same job. Having a hole drilled into your head and a brain chip implanted there doesn't seem like the funnest idea, let alone by a private company looking to make a profit, and God knows how they'll try and monetize this. Adverts directly beamed into your brain, your innermost thoughts sent off and monitored by foreign governments. And this is why tech billionaires and investors are going all in on this technology, because once properly developed, it'll tear down the last barrier between the brain and the digital world. So let's go into this further through the lens of communication. Before telecommunications and all the innovations of the past few hundred years, you only really had two options for conveying complex information. Either you could say something to someone if they were close enough, or you could write them a letter. It could take weeks or even months for information to travel long distances. As time went on though, we slowly figured out faster and better methods, and that delay got cut down to almost nothing. Fast forward to today, and the internet means we can know about things happening across the world within literal seconds of them happening. In fact, the travel of information is so seamless and instant that we're assaulted with it at nearly every waking moment. So many of our experiences and the information we gain about the world is no longer from the actual world around us, instead it comes from this new digital dimension that we've been submerged in. It still isn't a perfect connection though, as Mark Zuckerberg has lamented in his appearance on Joe Rogan. I mean, it's it's great to be able to make phone calls and video calls and all that. I mean, if you can't be with someone today, you know, it's nice to be able to see their face, but when you're on a video call, you don't actually feel like you're there with the person. Some people might say it's good to keep at least one foot in reality, but that's not the future being pushed by the people with real control over the world. They want a seamless connection so they can have more influence over people's lives and therefore make way more money. The further we go into the digital realm, the more reliant we are on their products and inventions. Zuckerberg wants to make the illusion stronger and suck people in further through the use of virtual reality in the metaverse. The more immersive the experience, the more effective it is as a product, but Neuralink threatens to go one step further. Once they've solved the problem of giving information to the brain rather than just receiving it, that's the last hurdle to jump over. We'll be able to express our thoughts to other people and get theirs back within milliseconds. You would be able to communicate very quickly and with far more precision. Online content will get sent straight to your brain and it will become like a sixth sense, enabling people to open up their minds and fully connect them to the digital world. This connection with the digital world isn't necessarily a good thing. If you thought people weren't really paying attention to the world around them before, this will be yet another step in that direction. At least today there's still the barrier of taking your phone out of your pocket and everyone knows you're not listening. With the neural implants of the future, it will be pretty much impossible for internet addicts to resist being online 24-7. Apart from making people annoying to talk to though, this interconnection would only make the worst kinds of internet groupthink more common. It'll mean people are truly replacing their own thoughts with information given to them by the internet. Our brains naturally take the easy route whenever there's an option. It's an evolutionary adaption designed to save calories and prevent us needlessly wasting energy. But just as it backfired in our modern world of junk food and cheap entertainment, it'll backfire again with neural implants. Easy access to junk food takes away the work you once needed to get that many calories, and it ends up eventually making the majority of people overweight and unhealthy. Around 50 years after the rise of fast food in the 70s and the population is far weaker, more cancerous, less capable physically than they once were. And by doing the same to complex thought and cognitive skills, by giving people chips that do it for them, we risk the exact same problems. A world of people made dumber because machines do the thinking for them. Even if brain chips do make us smarter overall though, it won't even be close to an equal spread. This technology isn't going to turn people into supercomputers overnight, but it does have real potential to destabilize the playing field. You can imagine delegating parts of your thoughts to AI using these chips. You could use the chip to instantly work out how to split the check at a restaurant or recall specific details that you can't quite remember. Later down the line, you can imagine people storing their memories and things they want to remember digitally, then calling back to them later on using the implant. Because the International Monetary Fund has warned that 40% of all jobs around the world will be impacted by AI. It says the effect is even more pronounced in the developed world where 60% of roles will be affected. According to the IMF, half of us will benefit from higher productivity, but the other half, uh, the rise of AI could see lower salaries, uh, reduced hiring, and even some jobs are disappearing altogether. You can do a lot of this with your smartphone already, but as the technology progresses, it will give people who can afford it a leg up on everybody else, making their IQ be slightly higher at all times than the rest of the population, giving them a huge advantage 
advantage in almost every field you can think of, further isolating the elites from the rest. Because obviously, all the benefits of this technology won't go to the many, it will go to a very select few Silicon Valley titans who can afford it, allowing them to become symbiotic with AI, all whilst the rest of humanity suffers the consequences of the AI revolution. Even when it does eventually become accessible to the general population, those at the top will have been ahead for years. For the entirety of human history, the difference between the rich and the poor has been limited to external factors. Things like a better diet, education, and an easier, healthy lifestyle make a difference, but we're all still human. Given the most powerful people of all, faster and more effective brains changes this dynamic forever. It will make climbing up the ladder almost impossible because all the people above you are just inconceivably smarter using a brain chip in their mind, allowing them to have access to tools you could only imagine. A lot of this still sounds okay when it's in the hands of responsible people working towards the good of humanity, but what about when that doesn't happen? Well, it's a sad fact that the world is sliding towards autocracy and dictatorship. As of 2022, over 70% of the world lives under some kind of dictatorship, a statistic that's still growing today. We're seeing this rampantly across the world, and even authoritarianism within the US itself. And as we've been warned by books like 1984, which we did a huge video on, which you can check out here, I explained that we're now seeing 1984 in our own world. Dictatorships are happy to exploit the tools of control that technologies give them, just like a China or Russia's mass internet censorship, or their facial recognition cameras aimed at every street corner. As our lives get more and more intertwined with technology, the degree to which they can be controlled by outside forces only goes up. So what happens when we put technology straight into our brains? Well, there's a lot of disturbing possibilities. For centuries, authoritarian governments have dreamed of the ability to control the thoughts of their citizens. They could do it indirectly through propaganda, social pressure, and fear. But Neuralink and other technologies like it could make this a reality. Sure, we can only really read motor functions and basic commands that go up right now, but that's all gonna change very soon. To actually read our thoughts on a much deeper level, these chips and the computers they connect to need to be able to interpret what specific neurons firing in specific patterns actually mean. Even though we have around 100 billion neurons, this isn't as hard as it seems. Our current AI models, while limited in a bunch of ways, excel at sorting through and noticing patterns in massive databases. In fact, we already have AI models that can translate silent thoughts into words on a screen. Subjects wearing a special cap which monitors brain signals could see their thoughts expressed in front of them with up to 60% accuracy. They would read the sentence slightly and the AI could tell what the sentence was without any other inputs. Never mind reading people's texts and what they share with their phones, this technology could expand to actual mind reading in a few years rather than decades. These neuroscientists at the University of Texas in Austin say they've made a major breakthrough. They've figured out how to translate brain activity into words using artificial intelligence. And you can't expect dictators not to salivate over the idea of just this. It could give rise to the literal thought police, following up on tips given to them by the helpful AI watchdog reading people's brainwaves. If that's not a cyberpunk dystopia, I don't even know what is. Imagine a world where just thinking the wrong thing could get you jailed for hate speech. These are all problems for the future, but what about right now? We're already seeing some of the potential issues that these implants can create, even just as medical treatments. Retinal implants are similar to neural implants, but instead they act as a replacement for damaged optic nerves. It's an amazing technology which can give rudimentary sight to people that thought they had lost it forever. But some people who've had these implants had their sight cruelly taken away again. In one case, a woman received an optic implant to fix a genetic condition which made her blind. But four years later, it suddenly stopped working and shut down, plunging her back into darkness. The company who made the implant had completely stopped supporting it and weren't willing to help at all. Another company has recently taken up the technology again. So in this specific case, all hope wasn't completely lost. It won't be that way though all the time, and lingering questions about the difficulty of upgrades and the lifespans of implants still plague the industry today. And these are just some of the many, many problems that neural implants and this technology could bring to the world. But I don't want to go full on conspiracy mode, considering this technology has only just been tested out on humans. But we haven't even dipped into the problems with actual mind control, thought interference, and what it really means to be human. There's also other problems that we might not have any idea are on the horizon waiting for us. In our relatively free countries, we will be able to refuse the implant altogether. But how long can that last? We already saw the vaccine passports and how we were forced to have it by governments across the West. Especially for those of us who are unfortunate enough to live under real tyrants, that might not be the case. You might not have any choice but to have a government mandated chip implanted into your skull. But even in developed democracies, we must be wary not to sacrifice any more of our freedoms for the latest technology, as we might never get them back. 